everyone. For this tutorial, I'm going to be going over a little bit of statistics that will be useful for your projects. Uh, and specifically, I'll be going into 95% confidence intervals. Um, basically, I'll briefly describe what they are, how to interpret them, how to calculate them, and how to plot them in Python. Um, and so I'll make the disclaimer here that I'm not really going to explain too much on how uh, on the philosophy behind them or how exactly they're uh, how exactly they work. I'm going to concentrate more on the interpretation of them, and I'll, I'll leave uh, the rest of that for your statistics professors when you take a, stati a statistics class later on in your graduate career. Um, so I, I basically set up a simple little toy example here where we are sampling um, out of a lake that's full of three-spine sticklebacks, and we want to estimate um, the average redness of the male sticklebacks in, in this population. So you see uh, this, this lake has 5,000 uh, male sticklebacks in there, so I just added those to the lake there. Um, but, then, but then, of course, yeah, if, if we're going out and we're, we're playing field biologist here, we can't really go out and sample all 5,000 sticklebacks. That's going to be really laborious. So instead, uh, what we want to do is we want to estimate uh, the, the true average redness of, of the males in this population by taking a subsample. And then with these 95% confidence intervals, we can indicate how confident we are in our estimate. So what we're doing with this code here is uh, this code is basically simulating us going out and, and capturing 30 random male sticklebacks um, and then measuring the redness of that stickleback and then saving it into uh, a, a, a sample list. Um, and then uh, basically what, what I'll just call magic code here. We basically just compute the mean of those samples um, and then we plug in um, this formula for the estimated 95% confidence interval um, basically multiplying the standard error of the mean by 1.96 and if we add that uh, uh, if we add this value to the mean and then subtract it from the mean we have those 95% confidence uh, we have that estimated 95% confidence interval now I'll stress that this is an estimated 95% confidence interval, which means it's not quite exact because it's assuming that your data is normally distributed. But again, I'll, I'll leave that to, to your statistics professors to explain all of that in detail. So let's go ahead and, uh, and plot our sample here. Uh, so the two red dots are the minimum and maximum um, for the 95% confidence interval. And then the blue dot is uh, our sample mean. And so basically what this is defining here um, is, is, it, is it gives us the ability to say that we're 95 percent confident that if we went, went out to the lake and sampled another 30 random uh, sticklebacks and measured their redness that we're, we're 95 percent confident that that mean would fall within these two dots here. So we can actually test this if let's say we fix uh, we, we fix the intervals and then we just go go ahead and take more samples again and I'll go ahead and run it and then we look and sure enough the blue dot is between the red dots we do it again still between the red dots and we could do this over and over and over and over again and 95 percent of the time at the very least uh, that blue dot would fall between the red dots. Now if you sat here running it over and over and over again, eventually that blue dot would fall outside and that, that's basically because um, how we establish the intervals, we're not saying that we're a hundred percent confident, right? Um, so this is a really useful tool uh, for us because we can't really go out and sample the entire population to get the true estimate but with this, we can, we can say how confident we are that it's within these bounds. Another really nice part about 95% confidence intervals is that we can get a better estimate uh, with them by, uh, by increasing our sample. Uh, and also we can, see, we can also see the effect of uh, decreasing our sample size. So for example, let's say we just took a sample of two fish here. If we go and look down at, at the plot, 
uh, you can see that uh, we're this doesn't look like a very accurate sample at all. Uh, the 95% confidence interval swings from two to eight, uh, and uh, you know, with a with an average somewhere in between there. And so it's pretty clear that just by sampling only two fish, um, it's clearly not a lot of large enough sample. However, let's say we sampled it with uh, 200 fish. If we look down at the plot. Um, we see that our 95% confidence interval is much tighter here, um, and uh, we're, we're much more confident uh, in, in our estimate saying that, that it's around three. And I'll actually reveal here uh, that when I set, the, set this fish simulation up, uh, that the true mean is around three. So even just by sampling only 200 out of the 5,000 fish in this lake, we were able to get a pretty um, accurate measurement of the true mean of the population. Um, so, of course, this is just for one time point, so what I wanted to show for the rest of this video uh, is, is how to plot this for multiple time points. So, let's, let's imagine we're going to uh, do this sampling in the lake over many years. I mean, let's say we're really dedicated and we do it over an entire lifetime, like 50 years, because we think something interesting is going on over time uh, in this population of fish and their redness. Uh, so that's what we're simulating here. Um, this this pro this should look familiar, where we basically grab the samples and we take we sample 30 of them, measure the redness, and then and then store that in our data table. And then this is simulating 50 years of our life right here, where we come back every year and take and sample those 30 fish. Once we have these samples for the whole 50 years, then we can finally sit down for our life's achievement. And, uh, and calculate uh, the mean and the 95% confidence interval of this redness trait over time. So first off, um, what we want to do is we want to go through um, all the samples over time and calculate every single mean. E each of these time point samples in the for loop is, is one year in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the experiment. And then basically we're just storing uh, the mean of that into this mean over time list for each year we go over. And we do the exact same thing for the uh, standard error of the mean over time, except of course we use a standard error of the mean function. Uh, and so when we run that and we throw this into the error bar function, which is how to, how to use it right here, we want to specify an x, y, and, uh, and the error bars. Um, when, when we plot that, um, this would actually be a really disappointing result because it just basically shows that the trait has been randomly fluctuating over time and there's not really much uh, significant change going on there. Um, so if we had decided to do this experiment for 50 years of our life, it would have very much been a waste. Um, but, but in any case, um, I'll, I'll put this code up online so you can work through it um, and, uh, and, and th this is pretty much the kind of graph that I'm looking for uh, for homework 7 so you can plot the mean and the standard error of the mean uh, or even the 95% confidence interval over time of these various traits uh, that the forager is doing. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial.